stack on my lonely trail. It's a hard life. The card scraper is my favorite tool in the wood shop. The surprising simplicity of how a flat piece of steel can produce such a clean, smooth surface ready for finish makes it my go-to tool for the wood shop. Card scrapers come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes and they're suited for different purposes. If you're working on a cabinet or a piece of flat woodworking, a rectilinear scraper will be just perfect for that. But I do a lot of curvilinear furniture and a lot of chairs, so I want something that has the curves and the, the shapes that I need to get in there and, and clean them up. In the past, I've used a gooseneck scraper. I have an egg-shaped scraper. I even have a rectilinear scraper with gentle curves on either side of it. And I always found that when I was reaching for the tool, I would grab the wrong one, or I couldn't find the one I was looking for. So I thought, why can't I design one that has all of the shapes, all of the curves that I desire in, for the project that I'm working on, wrapped into one scraper? So over a couple of years, I worked on a design, and I came up with uh, this guy. And he's my bear. The, the fact that it looks like a bear is a really happy accident. but. I worked through it and I found the best combination that had all of the different shapes and have them exposed on the scraper in, in prominence of the order that I would use them. It has a gentle curve that can get in and fair out the, the main part of the seat, a sculpted seat, and a little tighter radius for, for scooping out the back side of the seat where it transitions back up. Um, a, a very tight radius curve for getting into those channels and those hard to get at uh, curves and inside corners. The concave curve of the card scraper that I designed is really good for working on rungs and uh, stretchers. And it can also be used to sculpt a roundover onto a, a furniture piece, which is really nice. And then it also has a flat section, which is really useful. I hear a lot that, that sharpening a card scraper is difficult and people aren't getting the hook or the edge that they want. And it seems to be this hidden secret knowledge that people just can't tap into. But it's really not that difficult. And if the first time you get a good edge on your card scraper and use it, you'll be hooked forever and you'll stop using these guys. Throw them away. So whenever I'm going to sharpen a card scraper, a rectilinear card scraper, I will use a device that was popularized by Brian Boggs uh, years ago on a fine woodworking video that he did. It's just a block of wood with a slit down, a kerf down it, and you just slip the card sp scraper into that kerf and you can hold it in the, the vise while you're uh, using a mill file to true it up and then you can push it down on your stones. And I, when I'm doing my stones, I like to use diamond stones. I think they hold up uh, better with that uh, hard metal edge being pushed straight down into them than, a, uh, say, a water stone or an oil stone would. So I will push it down so that it's getting good contact with the stone. And I will work it back and forth on that stone. And I will go down in grits, making sure that I've removed any mill file marks. And I will progressively, progressively go down until I get a nice smooth finish. And when I'm happy with the finish, I'll take it out of the stone. And now it has a burr on it. It's created a burr because what it's done is it's removed some of that metal. And it, the metal is starting to fold out on the side and create a, a burr. And it will cut and it will make shavings. But this. Uh, what Curtis Buchanan calls this is a false burr or a false hook, and that's very true. Uh, what it is, it's removed metal and it'll start to break off and you'll get delineations in your work and lines, scores down your work. So what you need to do is remove that burr. You want to get rid of it completely. You want to have a nice square 90 degree end, very smooth, no bumps in it if you're going to get a, the best finish on your woodwork. Once I've removed that burr and I don't feel it at all anymore, I know I'm ready to start drawing out the metal. I'll place the card scraper on my workbench and the burnisher that I use is from Ron Hawk. It's, I, I think you can use a hardened drill rod as well. But his, uh, his burnisher is pretty inexpensive, and it does an amazing job. And it's really nice. It doesn't have the handle to get in the way, the way I, I do things. So I will draw out the metal. And you don't want to push the metal out. You want to draw it out, because if you push it, you're going to get little wrinkles in there. And you'll, again, you'll get those delineations and lines in your work. So you'll draw out the metal, and you don't have to use a lot of pressure. It can be really slight. 
And then what I like to do is go about an inch to an inch and, course, inch and a quarter past the card scraper, and I will push the end of the burnisher all the way down to the workbench. And I think you're getting maybe a quarter of a degree overbend. And I will just rub that down to overbend that metal that I drew out. And then I will bring it out to the, the edge of the workbench and I will hold my burnisher 90 degrees and I will just draw out some metal. I will draw up the hook. And it doesn't take very long and then you should have really good shavings coming off of there. And this hook will last you a lot longer. It's not a false hook. It'll stay there. It's bent metal rather than removed metal. It's not going to break off and it's going to give you a nice smooth finish. So like I said, this device works really, really good. But what happens when you have to do a kidney shaped or uh, gooseneck scraper? It's not going to work very well for you. Um, Gary Rogowski, he came up with the idea of, of holding the stone in the vise and then you can rub the card scraper against the stone. A great idea. Um, and what I did, I came up with these little just refrigerator magnets because I always have junk embedded in my workbench, little metal shavings from working on saws and stuff. And I just slap those on my card scraper and that way it kind of protects and doesn't the edge so I'm not going to mar it up. But what I found was a lot of times when I needed to go and resharpen or sharpen my, my card scraper, the, the piece that I was working on was already in the vise. So I would have to take it out and then put the stone in there. And then I like to progress through stone, so I'd have to replace them. Um, it, it's an, a really great method, but uh, for me, um, what I found is I just make this little cube. And this little cube has uh, eighth inch super magnets in it. And they lock down onto the stone. And then they, woo. <laughs> And they lock down onto the stone, and then they hold the card scraper at 90 degrees to the work. And then I can sharpen this, the card scraper, and I can work all those rounds without having fear of it going off angle. And I'll work through progressive grits on the stones just like I would on the rectilinear scraper. And again, I'll go and I will remove any burr that's left behind. And that, that does a great job on the outside here. But this inside concavity, I had trouble. How was I going to get that sharp? What I came up with was a fishing hook sharpener that you can get online for like three bucks. You can find them at Walmart, wherever. And uh, I just chuck it up in my drill. Hold it at 90 degrees. And it diamond sharpens the inside there. And that does a really good job. I've been really happy with it. Um, so then I will go through the same process. I will draw out the metal like that. And then I will overbend by about inch, inch and a quarter. And then I will bring it out. And I will draw up a, a hook all the way around. When I get to this inside edge, it can be kind of a bear, and I couldn't figure out, hot bear, that's plenty, and uh, I couldn't figure out how to get in there, and I came up with this burnisher, and I, I made a batch of these, and they sold out really quick, so I'm obviously going to have to make more of them, but I keep one in my pocket, it's pretty small, it has a, a steel rod protruding from it, and then it has another steel rod in it, and they're both set at two and three quarter degrees. That's about the, the angle that I love. And I can use that to reset if I want to. I can come back and draw out a new hook and then boop, set it like that. And it, with one swipe, if you, if you manage to contact both of those pins in there, you can set in one swipe. And it does a really good job of, of uh, setting the hook on the inside of that concavity. And I'll go around, and then I know that it's all set at the consistent angle. And I will get some nice shavings. So that's how I sharpen. Uh, for care, taking care of them. 
to keep your card scrapers, you can make uh, like a card file in your workbench. Uh, I, I knit myself a little leather pouch with my logo on it. That'll keep the, the, the hook and the burr from getting messed up. When I sell my card scrapers, they come in this mailer. And it works really good for putting it back in your, your workbench and keeping it good for you. So that's how I do it. Brian generously sent a set of card scrapers. He calls them chair scrapers for the school. So now all you guys probably have chair scrapers, card scrapers, same thing, um, semantics. Now the ones you probably have are rectangles, like the ones I've always had. Standard, typical, rectangular card scrapers. Sometimes, like when I did the tractor seat on my chair last summer, or sometimes when the students are doing their Cooper doors, you want to get into those tight corners, and you go out and you buy yourself one of these little gooseneck or kidney-shaped card scrapers. And that's nice too. Well, this is, and Brian has been selling these on his website. I was not aware of these. And these are, without a doubt, far and away, my new favorite card scraper. And he sells them for around $10 or something like that. We're gonna sell them here at the store for him, I think. Look at that. Not only is it kind of, I, I look at it and I kind of think of the shape of his logo, the bear cat, somehow. But it has all the elements you want in those other scrapers. It has obviously your flat side. And this nice big curve with this tighter curve over here. So those really tight areas, more gradual areas like on the Cooper door and the flat side. I was not aware of these. Brian makes these. These are all ready to work. Can you see that? Look at all those shavings. Um, all ready to go out of the package. Man, Brian, these are beautiful. And they make so much sense. Because for years I've been looking at card scrapers and thinking, wow, it's like they're fine as they are, but no one's really, you know, rethought this very much. And there has been a whole lot of new things. And I don't know when when you started making these, Brian, but um, I just, I was blown away and, and we and he sent, sent 10 of them to the school. So we have one in every bench now. I'm gonna keep one of them, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, really nice. Very, very, very nice. Great idea. I love just the idea of it. Just the, you know, flat on one side and the curved side on the other. So Brian, thank you very much. For the rest of you guys, watch out for these. We're gonna be putting them on the UW store website if you'd like to order from us. Help keep the lights on. Depending on the project you're working on, making your own card scraper might work out really well for you. If, you're, if you need a, a scratch beater or if you're, you have a, a certain curve that you need to maintain throughout the whole piece of the furniture, you can design your card scraper and just cut it out of a piece of spring steel, an old saw blade, something like that, and, and it, as long as you can get it to hold an edge, it'll work perfect. So when you're trying to remove marks left by a saw or another tool, you're gonna to have valleys, highs and lows, and the best way to fare those out, much like a plane, how a plane takes off the high spots, you skew the, the scraper to remove the highest spots first. Doing it in one direction, and then coming back and skewing in the opposite direction, you can help to fare out any highs and lows and start to produce a plain surface. What you're looking for is a shaving to come off and not just sawdust. If you're getting sawdust, that means you're, you're dull. You, you need to retune the hook. When you're getting close to the finish that you like, you can tilt the scraper down further and take a little lighter cut. You're still getting shavings, but they're a lot lighter and it's more dust-like. And that really gives you a nice sheen. I don't know if you can see this.
Over the last year, I haven't been doing so much woodworking. I've been focused mostly on tool making, especially saw making and my card scrapers. And one thing I started to notice was that when I'm filing the dovetail saws, especially when I'm, you know, even though I'm using these super cheaters, I was having trouble focusing and trouble seeing what I was working on. So I finally broke down. I got myself some new specs, and they're bifocals, and but they're they got the uh, transitional lenses in them, so you don't really see the line, which is kind of nice. But that it just happens as you're getting older, your eyes get worse. Like yesterday, I found another gray hair in my beard, and I started to wonder, well, what am I going to look like when I have these specs and a full gray beard? We got time. It, we can figure something out. Anyway, uh, so. <laughs> The concave portion of the scraper that I designed is really good for doing uh, stretchers and what are those other things? <laughs> the concave surface of this, this the concaved, um, the concavity, the concaved curve that I designed in my card scraper, the concave curve of this card scraper that I, the concaved curve, Depending on the project, making your own card scraper is not very difficult. All you need is a piece of spring steel. You can, ah! What are now? Only something something, blah, blah, blah. We'll insert price here. Depending on the project you're working on, it might be a good idea to make your own card scraper. To benefit, to, to facilitate, to, um, what's the word? My favorite tool, huh? How cool is that? <laughs> what do you think, cat? Okay.